Hey everyone, welcome to the first episode of my multiplayer Let's Play series here on the Dominion server. Now I've been wanting to make a Let's Play for a while on my channel, and I'm so excited to finally start recording this new series. I hope you like that montage at the beginning of the video. It was just to showcase a few of the builds that there are on this server. I mean, there's so many incredible builds, that montage could have lasted hours. I just wanted a quick intro into a few of the builds that there are on this server. What kind of things you might see in this series. For those of you that don't know, I actually first joined the server back in August 2021. So I've actually been a part of this community for 10 months now. However, in that time, I have not really done that much in terms of building. My base is still only just started to have been built. As you can see from my gear, it's a mixture. Of, it's not well. It's not fully upgraded, is it? Basically, and uh, I've basically got no farms. So there's a lot of work and progress that I still need to do to get developed in this world. So in that aspect, it's not quite a traditional first episode of a new Let's Play series, as I'm not starting out from scratch. But I just want to assure you that there's still lots of stuff to do on this server. So I'm currently in the new spawn platform in the new spawn area of the world. Now, this world has been ongoing since 2019. So it's actually coming up to its third anniversary in a few months. And what happened was when the 1.18 version of Minecraft dropped, the world has essentially expanded and spawn was moved from its old area, the old 1.14 area, to the new 1.18 area, which is where we are now. So it's still a bit of a work in progress, but as you can see, a lot has been done over the past couple of months. And I must say, it's, it's a great place just to go and explore and see what details there actually have been built. Now, this is something that's had a much bigger focus on the server than the previous spawn in the 1.14 area. And as you can see, if I'm just coming through here, through the main spawn in, and you can just see the detail and the beautification process. And there's some stunning views as well. And you can see part of the shopping district over here. I just crossed this bridge. You can see here, this is the Lapis area of the shopping district, and it's on the border with the Emerald area. See, there's a portal over there. Basically, how it works is you've got the shopping district wrapping around Central Spawn, and it's split up into four main areas. So you've got Lapis district, the Emerald, the Amethyst, and the Gold district. Each one has its own portal, which links to the main nether hub, which I'll actually go and show you in a minute. But I just, I just wanted to start the video here in Spawn. So I think that's probably the best place to get a feel for what the server's like. And actually, whilst I'm here, I'll go and just check my mailbox to see if there's anything interesting. Jump down here. Hello, Dilbert. Yeah, I'm not sure what that is. Random observer there. Um, I am wing D. Yeah, this is it. So this is the main server mailbox area. And it also couples as an ender link area as well. Basically, what I mean by that is that there are ender pearl stasis chambers all along here. So each one of these belongs to a different player. There's such a brilliant mechanic. Fully vanilla survival. Basically, you chuck a, an ender pill into a bubble column and it will just sit there, basically in stasis, until you click this button and that causes the piston to push a block which hits the ender pill and that basically causes you to teleport from wherever you are in the overworld to here in spawn. So, what you've got is a slash spawn command, essentially, but in survival. 
and it's something I'd never heard of before before I joined this server. But it's brilliant. And here's my mailbox here. What's this? Rocket 404. Okay, that's just an advertisement. And Berry Exchange. Oh, that's not bad for each tools actually, depending how good they are. But if you may have noticed, I don't have an Elytra on at the moment, so that Rocket advert isn't very useful. And the reason is that there's an Elytra competition going on. Basically, who can survive the longest without putting an Elytra on? And I must say, it is pretty torturous. It's alright at first, but after a while, it gets a bit annoying having to walk everywhere rather than fly. I mean, it does give a better appreciation of the world, which is, which is the main reason why this competition is a thing. It gives you a different view of the world rather than just flying over everywhere. But it is a bit annoying after a while. But hopefully, I think it finishes in a few weeks so I can actually start flying again. So what I'll do is, I'll go to the main nether hub by taking the Emerald District Portal, which is the one nearest to spawn, the spawn platform area. And if you hadn't noticed, each of these districts have a different path block palette as well, which is quite nice. Makes a more unique feel to each district. Oh, this way. So look at this. Now, this was included in the montage at the beginning of the video. But this is the main nether hub for the 1.18 area. And you can see there's... It's tried to make a kind of cave design. And you've got these geodes. I love these geodes. Sticking out. And they kind of they always glow. Because I think there's probably some lighting behind there. But it's just amethyst blocks and purple glass. It just looks so amazing. And you've got the four portals here as well, linking to each district. And then we have this, which is quite crazy as well. It's like a mirror. And then you can look down, look how far it goes down there. And then there's these pink candles added as well onto these vines. Makes them look as if they're flowering. Which is another really nice little detail. I would also keep an eye on those boats. I swear they're multiplying down there as well. Before we know it, the whole floor will be covered with them. And I'll take this ice road. Basically, there's four northeast, southwest ice roads, which takes you to different areas of the map. It's much easier to travel, obviously, in the Nether than in the Overworld, especially when you don't have an Elytra. As you can see, I've started decorating my tunnel as well I've used oak and spruce and then I've used crimson logs and I really like it to be honest it's I didn't want to make the design too complicated although you know it is a bit <laughs> um, but I do really like it the only problem is I've only decorated it up to here and the tunnel is a lot longer so this is the end of my tunnel and I want to kind of create my own little nether hub here and have it have a main kind of portal to my main base somewhere in the middle and then have it connect to a few other portals nearby which would probably have a few farms. I think it would be quite cool. So that would be something I need to design. I've got no idea, of, you know, how I'm going to build it yet, but that's something I can do in a future episode. And here we are. Ta da! My brilliant, state of the art, stunningly built base. Nice, contemporary dirt floor, amazing walls, look how smooth they are, and chests absolutely everywhere. Hopefully, you realise this is just temporary. What we've got here is my main storage area. I've tried to have some kind of logical sorting organisation to it, but they are starting to get a bit full, some of these chests. So I kind of expanded a bit in all directions, which is something I need to work on.
And I just want to point out, I was given this map art uh, as a secret Santa gift at Christmas. And for those of you that don't know, that is my calcite house, which I built, uh, I think, in August. I've got a tutorial on my channel for that. And I just absolutely love this. Unfortunately, whoever gifted it to me has remained anonymous, so I can't thank them properly. Which is a bit of a shame, but I just love this. This will be a pride of place somewhere when I've eventually got my base finished. So out here is basically my main build, what, I, what I'm actually working on. Um, if I go up here, because there's no actual access point yet apart from scaffolding. Still a very big work in progress right now. So what this is, is essentially, it's an island which I found, which is quite a mountainous island actually. And I decided I would terraform it and then I would have a main cave interior, which is where I could fit the majority of my base essentials such as storage room, furnace room and the majority of my farms as well. Because I don't really like having farms out to sea unless they're covered or have some kind of build around them that makes them fit into whatever I'm building, whether it be a town or in this case an island. So I actually got inspiration for this build um, from a picture which I saw on the internet and that was basically a Viking island which was built a few years ago I think. I mean I'll, I'll put it on screen now so you can have a look and see and basically you can see the whole front section is what I've tried to build here. I've taken a lot of inspiration from it. Obviously it's not identical but I've tried to especially with like the wheat field and then you've got the, the cliffs as well and the path and actually the island by that scaffolding pillar over there as well and I think there might be a better view from it from that scaffolding there so this is another thing because I haven't got a light to um <laughs> got scaffolding everywhere to try and have a good view so you can see here you've got the wheat field we've got the island to the left the main cliff and then I've got a couple of spruce trees as well so this is currently the progress I've made on my island but I can see the island is quite a bit bigger and I'm going to have well I'm going to attempt to terraform the whole island all the way around but all the sides and then add some mountains right near the top as well and then hopefully going to add some buildings to some of the flatter areas where I can house I don't know what yet but something I'll be able to house there okay I think what I'm going to do because I want to work a little bit more on the island today is if I get some uh, materials um, some stone and I think I'm going to work on this section over here where the path turns around here because there's this there's this whole section of the hill and it's covered in dirt at the moment and I want it to be similar in style to the cliff which I've already built and see that's very grey predominantly with a little bit of green so I think what I'm going to do is remove a lot of the dirt on this hillside and then see if I can landscape the cliff a bit better and then have some kind of a sea cliff similar to what there is currently basically just extend this cliff down here along and around and I think that might work it's worth a try anyway
So it's been about four weeks since that last recording. I know it's a very long time, but basically the server updated 1.19 uh, a couple of days after I was doing recording for this video. And then I had to wait pretty much a month for Optifine to fully update, um, which without I can't really play and record at the same time. So that's finally been updated, plus I've been quite busy um, moving house, so I've not had really much time to play, um, and obviously no time to record at all, but now I have, and with Optifine out, I'm back, <laughs> finally get this video finished. So uh, if I can remember, I was it was this cliff here. Um, it was very uh, covered in dirt, it was very brown, and it was something that I was wanting to work on. And as you can see, what I've done is replaced the dirt with stone, and I've kind of sculpted the base, the bottom part of this cliff, um, to match the cliffs I've already done. So we've got this grassy area here, which I will eventually add uh, some sort of vegetation I'm not sure what because I don't want it, everything to be identical um, so I've got all these vegetation here which is what uh, birch leaves azalea moss carpets and grass I want something a bit different maybe for the other side maybe some kind of crops growing or berry bushes something that just makes it a bit different otherwise it will all be the same but what I've also done is added some tough as well, uh, some veins of tough to add a bit more interest. And then I've got this big cliff coming down here and then it sticks out a bit like a pillar. So that's what I was aiming for. So what I need to do next is the top part. So remove the rest of the dirt and then add some stone uh, even higher because this is quite a steep, quite a tall cliff area. But that's something I'll work on over the next couple of weeks, I think. But for now, I need to travel back to spawn because last time I was recording, I was still doing the Elytra challenge. That has now finished and I finally have my Elytra back, which is why I've got rockets back in my inventory. And I'm going to get my reward now. Uh, which should be in my mailbox at spawn and I think I did uh, two days I think so 48 hours online non AFK playing without an elytra so I think that just makes me uh, able to get the gold trophy but we'll see what's in my inbox anyway I also forgot to mention with the server update in 1.19 there's a brand new 10k by 10k area of land which has been added to the server world so that's something which i've not been to yet but i think that'll be a good future video exploring the new 1.19 lands um so here we are in spawn what's that say don't forget to update the book done that yeah that's me free mead Aha! There we go. It is the gold award. Two days. Look at that. So that is a unique trophy. So as far as I know, you only can get this trophy if you've been in the competition and you've taken part. And I think there was about five tiers. Um, bronze, silver, gold, diamond and platinum, I think. Um, obviously didn't get the, the higher two, but gold is still very respectable, I think. It's nice to be able to get these views of the server once more, now that we have a lighter back. But that is quite a view. Ooh. I've not seen that shot before. Uh, is, that, is that supposed to be a turtle? No, a fly? Beetle? Something with wings? I don't know. I have to have a look, but 
I think I'll actually leave this episode here now. I've been wanting to get it published for a while now, and now Optifine's finally updated, I can. So I will leave it here, and I'll be back in a future episode. Um, I hope you enjoyed this video, and I hope you got an insight into the Dominion server, and what it's like. And I will see you in the next video. So until then, bye-bye.